Here we have uh, creeping rhetoric into uh, Fed, independence, yeah. into currencies. What happens next? Is this, uh, are we going to start labeling officially them manipulators or not? Probably not, just because we've resisted that, even though uh, there have been periods of manipulation. By the way, in recent years, the Chinese have stopped manipulating their currency. However, if you plot the yuan relative to the dollar and you draw a line where the tariffs start, Trump's got a point. Uh, they really did start tanking, and that is a surefire way to offset the cost of the tariffs. So he does have a point. Now, to get to the conversation, which I thought was a great conversation that the three of you were just having, uh, I'm not going to, you know, reach for the vapors because the president said some comments about the dollar and the Fed. However, I think the way you teed up your question is exactly right. If this becomes a repetitive drumbeat, particularly regarding the Fed, then it does raise independence questions. And as some earlier guests said on the show today, the Fed is one of the last standing institutions in this town that's working really well, and that's because of their political independence. So if, if the drumbeat were to keep up, I'd be unhappy about that. I mean, he can't have it both ways, Jared, right? He says the economy is the best it's ever been. Well, that would suggest the Federal Reserve should be raising interest rates to keep it from overheating. That and would suggest that dollar. money would be pouring into the dollar, right? Because we're exactly. the relative yeah. safe haven, we're the relative fast grower, higher and, and, yields. And let me, and let me add that. to that. Let me qu quickly add to that. He actually exacerbated that situation by stimulating with fiscal policy an economy that was closing in on full employment. Right. You juice the economy and the money flows into the U.S., Sarah. So I'm not sure there are any political implications of all of this, but the economy is working in his favor. The economy is working very well in his favor politically right now. Consumer confidence is as high as it's been for recent presidents. That typically helps an incumbent party. But, you know, these comments on the Fed and now he seems to have, you know, repeated them again over Twitter re uh, just recently. He's going to put the Fed in a position where it has to raise rates or its independence is going to be questioned. And so, you know, it's a, it's Trump gets these things in his you know craw and he can't let them go. And I suspect this isn't the last that we've uh, heard uh, from him on this topic. But we really think, Sarah, that that the, the president or, or that the, the Jay Powell is is not going to raise rates or raise rates based on what the president says. I mean, Jay Powell is going to do what Jay Powell wants to do and what he thinks is the right thing to do, no? Yes, that's that's right. Uh, and that's what we certainly believe and uh, most economists believe, very strong credentials independence. However, <laughs> you know, the president has a tendency to not let things go. Look at the pressure he's put on his attorney general over these Russia investigation. He's got it under his skin. He wants uh, these agencies to work for him. Independence, you know, in Trump world doesn't seem to matter the way it has for other presidents. He looks at the federal government as his uh, to control, and he's got a Fed chairman who's forecasted what he's going to do, two more hikes uh, by the end of the year, and he didn't like it, and he's not going to stop talking about it, I suspect. Uh, Jared, now we have uh, Kudlow elaborating a little bit, saying that uh, the Chinese and the U.S. have not had discussions in weeks, that they've offered no options on IP theft or tech yep. transfers. Um, you know, there had been some holding out hope that we were going to get a face-saving compromise ahead of the midterms. Does the market now get, need to get used to the idea that that may not happen, may likely not happen? I actually think the market was already getting used to that. And you know, look, Larry's been saying a lot of things I agreed with. I liked his segment at Alpha that we broadcast here. I liked his comments on the yield curve, the low probability recession. But when he talks about trade, he makes me and everybody else nervous because it's clear that there's really no underlying strategy to get out of this mess. There's only a strategy for escalation. And the theory of the case is that we can outlast the Chinese and that somehow magically at the end of the escalation, everybody shakes hands and agrees to stop ripping off our IP and bring tariffs to zero. That's implausible. That's not a plan. That's a fantasy. And markets are already nervous and they're going to get more nervous. By the way, the stuff about the soybeans, Trump is patently wrong about that. If you just plot soybean prices, by the way, compare U.S. and Brazilian soybean prices. You see the U.S. tanking with the tariffs and the Brazilian prices going up. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.